Good evening. I'd like to welcome everyone to the September 29th special city council meeting and I'm calling us to order. So before we move on to tonight's meeting agenda, I want to acknowledge that we are in a remote meeting format. On March 6th, I issued an emergency proclamation declaring a civil emergency in the city due to the COVID-19 outbreak. On March 24th, the governor issued Proclamation 20-28, prohibiting meetings that fall under the Open Public Meetings Act, such as our city council meetings, from being conducted in person. The prohibition has been extended through October 1st. Tonight's meeting will be held entirely remotely. The meeting will be recorded, streamed live, and available for later viewing on the city's YouTube channel. A call-in number was provided on the meeting agenda for members of the public who wish to call in by phone, to listen live to the meeting or to make comments. If anyone is on the call who did not sign up but would like to speak, please press star three on your phone. That's star three and we will add you to the speakers list. At this point, we'll take a moment to take a roll call of the council members in attendance. Please say here when I call your name. Council member Michelle. Here. Thank you. Council member Goodman. Here. Thank you. Council member Hall. Here. Thanks. Council president Hunt. Here. Thank you. Council Member Martz. Here. Great. Deputy Council President Ray. Here. Thank you. And Council Member Walsh. Here. That's all seven council, me council members in attendance this evening. Various city staff are participating in tonight's meeting, including City Administrator Bob Kowitz, Finance Director Beth Goldberg, and many of her finance team are here this evening. We also have the city's audit team from the Office of the Washington State Auditor with us tonight, and they will be introduced later in the meeting. For those members of the public on the call, welcome. The clerk or I will call on you to make comments when we reach that portion of our agenda. So I wanna reiterate a few meeting guidelines. For all meeting attendees, please speak clearly and pause frequently. State your name each time before speaking. Please mute your microphone when you are not speaking. And if you are also streaming the live video feed, please turn the sound off as there is a delay. The next item on the agenda this evening is public comment. Uh, City Clerk, has anyone signed up to speak this evening? No one has signed up to speak. Do we have any of those in attendance uh, that may desire to speak? I don't see any members of the public on the call tonight. Thank you, City Clerk. So as a reminder, um, if anybody would like to make comments, written comments can always be submitted at any time to your city council at citycouncil at issaquawa.gov. The next item on our agenda this evening is ID 0714, proposed 2021 budget, and this is my presentation to our city council this evening. My proposed 2021 budget is now available online at issaquawa.gov slash 2021 budget. The City Council should all have received an email uh, this afternoon directing you to a link to the budget. And Tisha, I want to see if we are ready to run the video, which is, are my opening comments uh, on this year's 2021 budget. Madam Mayor, Tim Smith will be running the video. You can just uh, pause for a minute. Thank you, Tim, whenever you're ready. Hello Issaquah, my name is Mary Lou Polly, and I am honored to serve as your mayor. The COVID-19 pandemic continues to impact our residents, businesses, and social service providers at a magnitude not seen in our lifetimes. The painful statistics show the real danger of the virus and why the precautions we are taking really matter. Despite these trying times, this pandemic has also demonstrated once again Issaquah's amazing resilience. I am forever thankful for the willingness of our community members to support people and businesses in need. Thank you for the kindness you have been sharing during these last many months. Earlier this year, I created the Issaquah Advisory Task Force to advise the city on issues related to our pandemic response and how we could reopen safely. These community members represented many different perspectives and backgrounds. Thanks to the task force and their great ideas and recommendations, we have implemented new and innovative ways to serve our community, like the downtown streetery, the reopening of our parks and trails, and guidance on how best to communicate with you, the community. We must keep that innovation going. 
As mayor, my main focus each fall is to present a draft budget to our city council for the coming year. This financial plan will tell a story of how we, as public servants, will provide services that foster a safe, vibrant, livable, and inclusive community that aligns with our city's strategic plan. Before I share some of the highlights of this year's proposed plan, I'd like to express my utmost gratitude to our hardworking city employees who face the challenging task of meeting current needs and preparing for future ones. This pandemic has financially impacted how we as a city do business, but our team is motivated to keep our essential services running smoothly during these challenging times. While we can't predict what lies ahead for 2021, the budget I'm recommending to our city council this fall is fiscally sound, responsible, and balanced. Soon after the pandemic reached King County, we started to forecast significant dips in our city revenues, potentially up to a $10 million decrease in 2020, which is 20% reduction. This is extremely challenging. To ensure flexibility as we responded to this unprecedented crisis, the city took a phased approach to cut expenditures this year. We needed to reduce our services to match our expected revenue levels, and that meant taking a hard look at the community's priorities and making some very difficult decisions. We focused on maintaining our core city obligations, public safety and public infrastructure. And this required cuts in all other areas. In total, we reduced spending by about $5.6 million this year, including the heartbreaking layoffs of 23 employees and the freezing of an additional 16 vacant positions. While extremely difficult, these early proactive decisions mean that we have more options than facing dramatic budget cuts that many other jurisdictions across Washington State and the nation are now currently facing. Thanks to our team's proactive actions, we feel that we may now be able to restore some key services in 2021. That said, we will continue to be operating in 2021 and beyond with reduced service levels when compared to the pre-pandemic service levels. I want to talk now a little bit more specifically about the numbers. The budget I am submitting to Council for 2021 totals $123 million. It represents a 14% reduction from 2020. It also includes 34 less full-time positions. I'm going to take a few minutes to talk about some of the highlights of my proposed budget and top priorities, including a focus on creating a safe and equitable community for all, investing in our parks and open spaces, and transportation improvements. First, in 2021, we'll be implementing Issaquah's Police Accountability, Equity and Human Services Action Plan, which was heavily shaped by public input earlier this year. Thank you for your engagement on this important initiative. I'm proposing to add two new human services positions to our team. One of these positions will be embedded within our police department, and the second position will be added to our Parks and Community Services team to expand our human services capacity. These dedicated professionals will help assist those in our community in need by providing the right resource to navigate the crisis that they are facing, whether it be a safety issue or a mental or behavioral health crisis. We are building our public safety team so that we match the resource sent to help with the nature of the crisis. We also plan to add additional civilian resources to our police department to help with reporting, data analysis, and responding to our community's records requests. We heard loud and clear that accountability and transparency are essential. I'm proud to announce that our employees have also created an equity team, which is focusing on engagement and training and recruitment for our city staff. This self-selected group of employees will develop a guide that will assist us in evaluating Issaquah's programs and services through an equity lens. Here in Issaquah, kindness is our strength, and our goal is to be welcoming and inclusive for all who live here. We have room for improvement, and we have the courage to meet that challenge. Next, safety is a priority when we are talking about our parks and open space system. I want to ensure our parks, trails, and open spaces are welcoming to everyone. While parks and open spaces have always been treasured in Issaquah, it's especially important now, as hikes, walks, and outdoor adventures can boost our mental and physical health as we stay safe and physically distanced during the reopening of our community. I'm proposing Issaquah hire its first ever parks ranger, as well as additional parks maintenance staff to care for and steward our beloved public lands. I want you to be able to enjoy safe, clean, beautiful parks and trails. 
This will free up time for our police officers who currently respond to non-emergency calls and concerns in our natural areas to be able to focus on emergency calls. I also plan to acquire even more Creekside and sensitive land in 2021 through grant opportunities. This effort will help us protect essential habitat and continue to build a green necklace of interconnected parks, trails, and open space. I'm also proposing updates to our parks and trail signage, which will improve our users' experience and help them find new outdoor treasures. Additionally, my proposed budget includes plans to make improvements to Central Parks Pad 3 in the Issaquah Highlands, as well as Hillside Park on Squawk Mountain. Along with investing in our parks and open spaces, we must continue working on another top priority for our community, making it easier and safer to get around town. Crews will soon complete a project to realign the driveways to Providence Point and Forest Village on Southeast 43rd Way and are installing a traffic signal at the new intersection. And thanks to contributions from Costco's international headquarters, we will soon revamp the intersection at State Route 900 and Northwest Sammamish Road near the Holiday Inn. It will improve overall traffic circulation north of Interstate 90. A priority for our South Lake Sammamish residents I also commit to further studying design options for adding a multimodal trail between 193rd Place Southeast and the State Park entrance. This will allow walkers, joggers, and cyclists a connection to our citywide trail system. Even though funding for this project is likely years away, we do need a shovel-ready plan. Meanwhile, several other city projects are priorities for 2021, including the following four. First, creating a new community environmental board which will replace the Rivers and Streams Board. This new board will be focused on sustainability, taking action on climate change, and protecting our natural areas. Second, updating Issaquah's land use code to help us better preserve, strengthen, and protect our city's natural and built environment. Then, working in partnership with the state on plans for future improvements to Lake Sammamish State Park. And lastly, surveying our residents to assess our city services and Issaquah's quality of life. My proposed budget restores several essential services and projects, but there remains a gap in the investments we need to make in our community. In 2021, Issaquah and all communities throughout our country will need to move forward in a new post-pandemic world. For Issaquah to thrive in 2021 and beyond, we must focus on three areas. First, we must consider the specific impacts for our community on changes to where people work. Many of our residents will continue to work at home and that will impact transportation, retail and commercial services. I am committed to continue working with the City Council on ways to support our local businesses, to welcome new businesses and to continue to ensure that people can easily get around Issaquah. Secondly, the City must watch carefully how we spend money. Simply put, our revenue streams, many of which are state regulated, do not grow at the same rate as expenditures that are needed to provide your city services. Using our community strategic plan as a guide, I am committed to continuous review of all of our services and programs and using data through performance measures to assess the best investments of your tax dollars. I am committed to maintaining our ability to provide our community the level of public safety and public infrastructure that our residents and businesses expect. These primary functions of local governments are important to our community. I am also committed to strengthening our partnerships within the region and the community to make sure we work together on all of our other programs and services that truly enhance and protect the quality of life in Issaquah. We are proud to contribute funding and combine resources to ensure our community is healthy and thriving. Finally, as more people work at home, maintaining and enhancing Issaquah's quality of life is now more important than ever. The city must continue to invest in open space, parks, and recreation facilities, streets and utility infrastructure, and the needed maintenance of all those assets. I want to work with the community on creative ways to continue to invest in what makes Issaquah such a special place. Please stay engaged with us this fall as your City Council deliberates on my proposed budget. I encourage you to watch and participate in our virtual meetings, which are all listed on the City's website. A pandemic creates an ever-changing set of constraints and issues and requires us to be flexible and nimble. And as we continue our response to this crisis, I am confident our dedicated City Council 
employees and community will demonstrate once again Issaquah's historic resilience and strength. Thank you. So thank you for allowing me to present this year's proposed 2021 budget. Uh, this is the first time Council will have seen the document today and it's now also available to the public, but we have many, many touches yet to come. The next will be October 6th when the City Council will hold a budget study session and at this meeting, staff will present a comprehensive overview of the recommended budget changes in the 2021 proposed budget, as well as the underlying policy framework. On October 7th, there'll be a virtual public meeting. This is a second opportunity for public outreach and it will be held providing an overview of the budget to interested community members. The full budget schedule is available on our website at issaquahwa.gov slash 2021 budget. And I would be extremely remiss if I did not give out a huge thank you to Director Goldberg and her team. Uh, their work on bringing this budget together during a year like this is really, truly amazing. So thank you, Beth. Uh, your senior budget analyst, Susie Monsell, who's with us this evening, and your management analyst, Jeremy Brecher Heimson. Um, so proud of all the work that you put into, do, into this budget and that I got to be able to present it this evening. So thank you so much, team. You guys are great. The next item on our agenda this evening is ID 0741. It's the 2019 Financial Statement Audit Exit Conference. This year, we are doing the annual exit conference um, at a city council meeting, and this is to be able to provide all council members the opportunity to hear the results of the audit and to ask any questions. The 2019 audit is distinguished in a few ways. It is the earliest an audit has been completed by the city of Issaquah since 2015, and it is the cleanest audit the city has had since 2013. I'd like to thank the city staff who worked so hard to accomplish this, Senior Accountant, Lindsay Misbin, and Financial Analyst, Anna Avicius. Thank you so much for all of your work on this year's audit. I'd also like to take the opportunity to introduce the newest member of our finance team, our Deputy Finance Director, Kristen Carpenter. Kristen has relocated to Issaquah from Florida, where she worked as the Accounting Director for Broward County, Broward County Florida. Welcome, Kristen, and if you want to turn your camera on and say hi to Council, that would be awesome. If that's possible. <laughs> there we go. Hello, Kristen. Um, now I'd like to invite Finance Director Beth Goldberg up and she will be introducing our audit team, Director Goldberg. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, so this is uh, finance night at uh, the City Council, and um, we are pleased to present the results of uh, this year's audit. Um, it culminates a tremendous amount of work uh, by the finance department um, this year, and, and frankly, leading up to it, um, this has been a goal to um, have our audits completed um, uh, far earlier and um, um, and and uh, cleaner with uh, no findings. So this is the culmination of that work. Uh, we are having uh, members of the State Auditor's Office present the results tonight. We were originally going to do this back in March, um, but this was, I believe, the first meeting to be canceled post-COVID. So uh, here we are six months later with the results of our 2019 financial statement audit and our single audit. And I will turn it over to our audit team, uh, Wendy Choi, uh, Lorraine Nita, and Kim Nguyen uh, from the State Auditor's Office. They've been terrific to work with, and um, I'll let them take it from here. And also want to uh, maybe quickly extend my thanks also to uh, staff who, um, who did yeoman's work uh, this year in uh, preparing our financial statements. Great. Thank you, Beth, for uh, the introduction. We are very pleased to be here this evening to share the results for the 2019 Financial Statement and Federal Grant Compliance Audit for the City of Issaquah. So I am Wendy Choi. I'm the audit manager for the team. Kim Nguyen is the audit lead who has been a part of the city's engagement in prior years, and Lorraine Ida was the supervisor or assistant audit manager. 
So in front of you is, hopefully everyone can see Kim's screen, it's the exit conference packet that we'll be going over tonight. Uh, really for me, I just want to take a moment with the Office of the Washington State Auditor. Our vision is to provide that increased trust in government. We're here to provide the independent examinations of the city and to be that added level of reassurance or added level of assurance for the public and for council as well as management. Um, we are also here as a added, added level of assurance for if there's any ways that there can be some efficiencies that are gained, we would hope the city um, would be able to come to us to seek resources and we could be able to get you in the, the right direction. Speaking from Team North King County specifically, we have a very open, transparent, collaborative relationship with the city, especially with Beth and her finance team. So um, really nice just to be able to be back here each year and be able to provide these independent examinations and have these open conversations. So at this time, what I'd actually like to do is hand it off to Kim, who is the audit lead, and she'll go over the highlights and the report. Good evening, everyone. Uh, thanks, Wendy. And um, before we get started, um, as uh, Beth indicated, I was the audit lead for the fiscal year 19 audit. And so tonight we're discussing the financial and single audit results. Um, and so before we get into the actual draft audit report, uh, we do want to take this time to just thank um, the city, especially Beth uh, Goldberg, uh, Lizby, Lizzie, Lindsay Misbin, uh, Anna Avicius, and as well as all the city staff that were really helpful to us. And uh, we really appreciate their cooperation and their timely responses to all of our requests during the audit. And especially, we just want to highlight the fact that it, how challenging it can be um, performing a full audit remotely. So we really appreciate all of their help. And we also want to commend the city because uh, we have noted noted great improvements in the city's financial reporting. Uh, and then we also want to thank the city for its ongoing commitment to building our relationship. And so if I can draw your attention to the draft audit report, and then um, so when you do see the audit report, you'll see um, if you haven't run across one of our audit reports before, um, this is the financial statement federal single audit report. And then we'll scroll down to page four just to provide a summary of the results of our audits. So first we'll go over a financial statement. And so we are issuing an unmodified opinion in terms of the, the city's fair presentation of its financial statements. This is great. This means that the city received a clean audit opinion. Uh, and since we perform an integrated audit, uh, we did look at the internal controls over financial reporting. We did not identify any significant deficiencies or material weaknesses, and we did not identify any instances of non-compliance uh, that would be material to the city's financial statements. Uh, did anyone have any questions related to um, the, what, what was just um, discussed? Kim, I'm not seeing any. This is the mayor. Council typically raises their hand in the chat box, and I will give you a notice if I see that. Thank you for okay. asking. Okay, great. And uh, so we'll move uh, to the finance, uh, federal compliance audit. And so uh, with that, it just involves that the city did receive federal funds um, through, through its grant program. And so the specific grant that we looked at this year was the 2205 grant, which is the highway planning and construction uh, grant cluster. And in terms of our review of internal controls um, over that specific program, we did not know any significant deficiencies, but we, however, we did identify a material weakness. And we'll talk about uh, this material weakness further uh, when we discuss the finding. Um, and so we did issue an unmodified opinion in terms of the city's compliance with requirements related to the program that we lo looked at, the 2205. And um, as mentioned, there was a finding. And so we'll scroll, scroll down further uh, to the actual finding. And so this is somewhat of a carryover item um, as to give you some context um, in prior, in the prior audit, we did note, note a similar finding related to suspension and debarment. So this is a requirement related to when the city contracts with um, an outside party, 
and the outside party receives um, over $25,000, the city is required to confirm that the party is not suspended or debarred. Uh, basically, in the prior audit, we noted um, the, just the absence of uh, the policy piece and as well as um, just the contract, uh, the contract listing that um, the city would perform, go through and verify that a, a party is not suspended or debarred. Uh, just due the, to the timing of the prior audit and then just because we are looking at um, historical information, um, the timing, although we've recognize the city's made some changes um, to which we think will fully address the issues that we noted. Um, it's just a carryover item. And so uh, just because of that timing piece, um, we essentially have a repeat finding and it will look very similar to what was noted in the past. Um, this is and the mayor so again. Um, I just wanted to make one clarification there uh, in case it wasn't um, apparent. And that is that you believe that the modifications that have been made uh, will prohibit or um, will make it so that this mistake could not happen again. Is that what the comment was saying? Yes, ideally, um, with the changes that the city has um, has made so far and what has been communicated to us and shared with us, um, of course, we have to follow up on this finding this year, but we do believe the steps, if followed, should address um, the issue, concerns identified in, in the findings. Thank you, Kim. Okay. If Do we have any other questions? There are no questions at this time. Thank you. Okay. And so uh, we'll move on further um, in terms of um, since there were findings reported in the previous audit, we did have to do, perform some follow-up work. Um, as mentioned, there was a uh, finding over controls over the financial statement preparation uh, in fiscal year 18. So we did uh, follow up uh, with the city as well as uh, through the course of performing audit procedures, we confirmed the status of uh, concerns noted in the prior audit. And, for, and essentially uh, we do agree that the finding has been fully corrected. Um, and for the financial statement audit uh, finding last year. And then so that will be noted um, within the audit report. And then we have uh, the follow-up related to uh, the finding in the prior prior year. So the finding the prior year involved uh, federal procurement as well as suspension debarment. Federal procurement wasn't um, material to the grant this year, so we did not review it, but uh, we did perform some follow-up procedures. And uh, that suspension debarment piece uh, we just discussed. And so we do think uh, based on the, what the city's um, shared with us and as well as our follow-up procedures, we do think it will be fully corrected. It's just a matter of we still have to perform some follow-up procedures because we have that trailing um, finding that occurred this year. Okay, did anybody have any additional, any additional questions? Not, the, not yet, Kim, thank you. Okay, um, okay, so we'll move back to the audit agenda. And so I'm gonna hand, it, oh, hand over pre presentation to my uh, assistant audit manager, Lorraine Nita. Thank you, Kim. Um, as far as recommendations not included in our audit report, we do have a management letter that we are communicating and it communicates control deficiencies, non-compliance or abuse with less than material effect on the financial statements. Um, their management letters are referenced in the audit report, but they're not included. And um, during our audit, we had one, a management letter related to timely bank reconciliations, which we will discuss now. So if uh, we can go to page two. All right. Um, the city is responsible for designing and following internal controls that provide reasonable assurance regarding the reliability of financial reporting. And in previous audits, we had communicated to the city about performing timely reconciliations. And we specifically had noted um, the city was not performing monthly bank reconciliations in a timely manner. 
And so during our audit for fiscal year 2019, we did find that the city continues to be behind on completing their the monthly bank reconciliations in a timely manner. And specifically for all 2019 monthly bank reconciliations, they were not prepared and approved until April 22nd of this year, just with some difficulties encountered during um, the city's implementation um, for the payment and receiving system that occurred in November 2018. And because of this, um, the 2020 bank reconciliations were also delayed. And as of this month, um, the city has been in the process of preparing its bank reconciliations. So for the January 2020 and is working on February through March and working through up to August. Um, and then without timely bank reconciliations, the city just can't ensure that financial information is accurate or that errors, if there are any, are identified in a timely manner. But we did want to communicate that we were able to substantiate the entire uh, cash and cash equivalents amounts reported on the financial statements without any issues. Um, and then I did want to mention too that um, that our office does provide a resource for best practices on bank reconciliations. Um, it's the Center of Government Innovation. And so the city can use that as a resource when um, trying to find ways to be able to um, work on the monthly uh, bank reconciliations and being timely. Are there any questions related to the management letter? Not that I can see right now, Lorraine, but we may have some at the end. Thank you. All right. Thank you. And then we also, as far as exit items, we had one exit recommendation that we consider a housekeeping item, and we've already discussed it with management. The exit item is not referenced in the audit report. And then as far as communications required by auditing standards, um, in relation to our financial statement audit report, we just wanted to bring to your attention that we did I have some uncorrected misstatements in the audited financials that are attached. Um, and these are just housekeeping, um, they're not material, and we do agree with management that they um, did not need, need to be corrected. And so this could be used as a guide when preparing the 2020 financial statements. And then we also wanted to communicate that there were no material misstatements in the financial statements that were corrected by management during our audit. Okay. Uh, Lorraine's experienced a connection issue, so we'll hand it over to uh, Wendy. Thanks. Okay, thank you so much. So under finalizing your audit, just some quick uh, housekeeping items. The federal financial statement report that Kim shared with all of you this evening will actually be published on September 30th tomorrow, uh, yep, tomorrow to meet the federal deadline. And that's something I do want to commend the city for. The federal government has granted a three-month extension for September 30th federal deadlines, just recognizing the impact of COVID. And um, so typically the normal federal deadline is September 30th, but technically the city does have till December 30th. And this just really speaks to the success of the 2019 audit. Um, here we are, where basically what's left with this federal deadline is I have to certify a collection form on behalf of the Office of the Washington State Auditor, which I will do right after this call tonight and submit it to the clearinghouse. So really something to be proud of. Um, included is also our management representation letter. We're just required to share with the governing body the letter that management has attested to that during the audit, you your team worked with us in good faith, answered questions that we asked, provided the request, requested documents, um, where it's fully cooperative with disclosures and whatnot. So we included a copy of that in your packet this evening. And that's just regular standard requirements for the financial audits and accountability audits that we perform. At the end of the engagement, so the accountability audit is still in progress. So we'll have another opportunity to meet to go over the results of the accountability audit. And once these reports are released, a customer service survey will come out. 
So we really appreciate any feedback you have. Really what we don't know, we don't know. So if there's things that are working well, please let us know so we can continue that. If there are things that we should consider differently, we want to be able to receive that feedback as well. And just real quickly, two great resources that our agency offers. One is the Center for Government Innovation that Lorraine had mentioned with our resource database that has best practices for not just bank statement reconciliations, but a whole list of information. Um, kind of our agency knowing we do a lot of outreach, trying to get those resources and information in a database for our local government so that you can be able to use that and um, kind of share the knowledge that we have. We also have our local government support team, which the city's finance team is very familiar with, but they're available where you can submit help desk questions and we have specialists that will answer those questions for you. We have um, specialists that can help with annual online report filing and sometimes even new accounting standards that come each year from the standards boards. And just lastly, just a list of the key individuals in our agency so that if there are any questions to feel free to reach out to us. And aside from that, that's the results for the 2019 financial statement and federal grant compliance audit. If there weren't any questions, or if there were, we'd be free to happy to answer them. Yeah, uh, thank you so much. This is Samir. Wendy, thank you and your yes. team. Uh, it's been a pleasure working with you over these last seven years for me. Uh, yes, so very yes. exciting. I am going to um, give the council members a few seconds to indicate whether or not in the chat they have questions, but I'm also going to turn to Council President Hunt and ask if uh, there was any uh, members of the public that provided comments on this topic. Thank you, Mayor Polly. Um, no, we did not receive any email comments on this topic. Thank you very much. Uh, so I do see that we will have a few council members commenting. Uh, let's start with uh, Council Deputy Council President Ray. Thank you, Mayor Polly. This is Chris Ray. Um, I just wanted to a and first and foremost thank the um, audit team for the excellent work they they have done and the guidance that they have given us. And then B, I just wanted to recognize the strides that um, our finance department has made over the last uh, several years, couple of years, and that the effort that has been put into um, upgrading our financial um, system with a, with a little s, I mean, the way we do our finances is really paying dividends. And I think it's really important for me personally and for the public at large to really have confidence that uh, we are doing a credible job of managing their money because it's their money. Thank you so much, Deputy Council President. Council President Hunt. Thank you. Um, firstly, I agree with Council Deputy President um, Ray. Um, thank you for the presentation as well. And I had a question, I believe, probably for Director Goldberg. And I wondered if you could explain what um, improvements to the processes have been made around the bank reconciliation issue that was identified. Thanks. Yeah, I would be happy to uh, respond to that. So, um, uh, as uh, the audit team noted, um, we, uh, the city implemented a system called Perfect Mind to do cash receding uh, for our Parks and Recreation Department um, in late 2018. In early 2019, uh, finance working with park staff um, identified um, a glitch with the system that was um, uh, preventing accurate information being communicated between Perfect Mind and our bank. Um, and so we immediately upon identifying it, the parks and finance team collectively were working with Perfect Mind to resolve the problem. It was a software problem. Um, and we could not complete uh, the bank reconciliations until we resolved those those software problems. And it wasn't until um, 
the summer of 2019 that we were ultimately able to resolve those problems. So, um, and then we had um, uh, the employee responsible for for bank reconciliations was out on maternity leave. So we we had some um, some gaps, and when we were able to finish those, so um, we were behind last year. Um, we got caught up um, in time to close the books on 2019, as is noted in in the um, the financial statement report or the the audit report. Um, we we finished those reconciliations uh, this past spring. Um, everything checked out. There weren't there weren't any any um, inconsistencies between the reconciliations. But as uh, the audit team notes, it is a best practice to stay on top of this. So uh, we take this very seriously, but it's cumulative. You can't finish one month until the previous month is reconciled. So the fact that uh, we didn't complete 2019 until the spring of 2020 meant that we're also now behind on 2020. So um, we are working um, diligently to get caught up on that. Uh, the other thing I will say is that um, our bank reconciliations in general are far more complex than um, uh, they need to be. Um, and we need to go through some, frankly, some um, system improvements, process improvements. And this is something that I've asked, and I don't mean to put her on the spot uh, two weeks into this gig, but uh, one thing that I've I've tasked Kristen with um, is, is her first priority is to uh, get her arms around the bank reconciliations and work with staff on that. Um, and um, I think she will tell you also that, that our bank reconciliations are, are more complex. With the re-implementation of MUNIS, there is a way to automate the process. Um, we don't have that module with the current system. It will be with the new system. So that's coming down the pike. The other thing that we have is we have multiple bank accounts that also add to the complexity of the bank reconciliation. So one of the things that we have been talking about is whether we need to consolidate the, those accounts to um, make bank reconciliations um, easier. So um, this is very much a priority, um, like uh, many of the challenges that we have been dealing with over the last couple of years. Um, it, it's it's easy to identify what the problem is. Um, it, it's taking a little bit of an effort uh, to get through it, but I'm I'm confident that um, we um, we will get there, and and certainly recognize that this is something that um, we need to improve upon and and get our arms around. And then again, I will just underscore. Um, we need to do this because it protects ourselves if there are errors or there's anything funky going on, but there weren't any errors in 2019 or anything funky. So um, I just want to make sure that that's clear as well. Thank you, Director Goldberg. I'm not seeing any other questions or comments right now, but I'd like to add a few of my own. Um, so impressed with our audit team, both at the state with our auditors and with our internal team. Um, love the new format that we would actually be doing these exit interviews on camera. Um, I've been attending them for both Eastside Fire and Rescue in the city of Issaquah um, as a regular meeting, but putting it out on the, out to the public like this is just, you know, the ultimate in transparency. We're showing you everything. We want to make sure you are confident that your tax dollars that you are sending into the city are being managed well. And so I, I would, commend the entire team for this. I think you've done a fantastic job and also for our city council. Thank you very much for supporting Beth's comprehensive finance department update where we still have a couple of big dates coming up in January of 2021 and some trying to meet that uh, deputy council president raised expectation for um, some new reporting and that he's been asking for for a while as well. So this is just all around a really uh, great report uh, great teamwork, and thank you so much for the transparency this provides to the public. Really proud of everyone. There being no other comments, this was our last item of business this evening for this meeting. However, the council is also having an uh, additional session this evening, a study session that will be starting at 7 p.m. So we are going to be able to give you a 15-minute gap between meetings tonight. So Take your time before you join the next meeting. Thank you all for coming and there being no further business, we are adjourned at 645 this evening. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Good night. Thank you.